Well, praise the Lord. Thank you for waiting and coming back, and thank you for sharing this time with us. Dr. Kilafa Kali here, Kingdom Apostolic Ministry. This is our school of ministry as we continue, and this is the school of health healing and supernatural healing. We've done uh, phase one, two, and three, and we're delighted that you are back this evening. We want to dive straight into this word. Thank you for your patience. And uh, tonight we're going to be praying and believing God for supernatural healing. But let's get into the teaching on healing tonight. Thank you, Ramesh. Good to see you. Please like this, share this quickly. This is tonight. We are in a global time and so much is going on, a crisis and a pandemic. And we're going to practice healthy methods. We're going to do all that is necessary for health and healing. But we also want to practice the word of God and stand on the covenants that we have in the Lord. Praise the Lord. So let's jump straight into this word tonight. Let's go to the book of Psalm chapter 1. Let's get into the word of God tonight. Like this, share this Psalm 103 verse 1. Today we did part 1, 2, and now we are part 3. We want you to share this and like this. Go back to the other sessions and be blessed in this time. Psalm chapter 103, verses 1 to 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. I want to let you know the same God the same Christ that forgives us of all our sins is the same God that heals all of the diseases we have instantly by faith. That's what this word is saying. The same God, when you and I pray and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for sinning, hurting, violating your laws and your principles. Forgive me. And you believe and I believe immediately through the blood of Jesus and what he did on the cross, we receive forgiveness for the sin. Whether it's lying, thieving, stealing, adultery, whatever we have done, we are forgiven immediately. And that the Lord, according to his word, he removes our sin as far as the east is from the west, that we truly come back into right relationship with him. If we confess our sin, the Bible said he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the same power that forgives the same person, the same king, the same Lord that sits on his throne and oversees forgiving of our sins is the same God who heals all of our diseases. Praise God. He heals all of our diseases. Who redeem, verse 4, who redeemeth your life from destruction, who crown you with loving kindness and tender mercies. What an awesome God we have. Psalm 107, we're going to be talking about health, healing, and the supernatural power of God to heal. I want to let you know the covenant that you and I have uh, that's found from Genesis to Revelation. We've covered a lot of it earlier today. Go back over those teachings tonight. We're going to just dive into the closing. As a physician, I've seen many people healed and cured by medicine and by therapy and by counseling sessions and by just being uh, on the treatment and regimen. And I'm so grateful. But also as a missionary and as a, a pastor, an apostolic leader, I've traveled with my wife to nations and we have seen supernatural healing. I'll never forget we were in Southeast Asia and we were praying for some young people, a young girl who was deaf with named the parents that had never heard and we began to pray supernaturally and believe God and after praying all of a sudden God touched that young girl and she began to talk. I whispered, uh, you know, in her ear she was uh, of a, understood a different language but I spoke in her ear and she understood and began to repeat it and we had that for three or four of them. Praise God. We saw the supernatural power of God. People who have had all types of ailments as we travel, especially. But we are praying for people right here in our country. Hallelujah. 
we prayed for many and they've gotten super naturally touched by Jesus. Uh, you know, they, 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 you know, came to the church and elders and prayer ministers, they have prayed with them and they really got healed. And we told them, go to your doctor and check it out. Praise God. And some of them, the pain left and the, 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 the shortness of breath left and the headache left. And we had a report of one lady who had palpitation. They had diagnosed her with mitral bowel prolapse. And she was on medication and she was sick. And every so often she would have these palpitations. And I'm telling you, we prayed for her. And that woman took the word of God, stood on it, believed it, trusted the word of God. We prayed and stood with her just once. But she grabbed the whole of the word. She began to read the word, study the word, meditate on the word, and, and receive the word. And I'm telling you, God healed her body. Hallelujah. After a few days, we were in a three-day fast and shut in, praying and believing God. And on that resurrection Sunday, that weekend, we were in prayer and we prayed for her and she got instantly healed. And I'm telling you, that's a few years now. She's not been on any heart medication. She went back to the doctors, her labs and her heart rhythm and her ECG. Everything is completely normal. She is on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ right here in my city. Praise God. There's another young lady. She had terrible menstrual period cramps. I'm just giving you some of the examples to get you excited. Share this because at the end of me teaching and giving these testimonies, we are going to be praying for the sick of every type. Uh, and um, let me tell you, that woman, she used to have terrible periods over the years. You know, from a teenage years, she had terrible periods. And, uh, you know, when a period came on, she would vomit and be sick and laid up in bed for weeks at a time. Needed strong medication during a menstrual period. I'm telling you, she would have shaking and pains in her leg and vomiting. We prayed God for her through the word of God. <clears throat> Gave her the scripture on healing. She ran with the scripture. She repented of her sins. She rededicated her heart to the Lord fully to serve him. And she began to break everything the Holy Spirit told her to break in prayer out of her life. So her life got cleaned up on the inside. And I'm telling you, that woman... God heals supernaturally by God. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, she was so clear in the last report she gave our ministry and our family. Hallelujah. She doesn't have those painful period cramps. You know, her period comes on now, excuse my expression, and she is free of any pain. Praise God. Her period comes and she doesn't even know sometimes. It just creeps up on her and no pain. And then she, you know, goes through a period, no vomiting, no sickness, no laid up in the bed, no cramping pain running through her body that incapacitated her. She can function and do well. And I'm telling you that lady's on fire for Jesus. Praise God. I can tell you so many stories of the power of the healing of Jesus Christ in our day 2020. He is still a healer. Let's turn to Psalm 107 verse 20. I'm going to jump into uh, summarizing what we taught today and then we're going to jump into the New Testament, Jesus and his healing ministry and what he has left for the church today to walk in. Praise God. Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20. And it says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Well, we studied that earlier today. And I was listening again to the Lord and studying and preparing for this evening. And I'm telling you, that word sent comes from the word shalak. Stretch forth. The Lord sent his word. He stretched out and extended his word. He loosed his word. That's the Hebrew term for sent. The Hebrew word for the word word, wherein he sent his word, is the word daba. Daba. And it means the spoken word, the utterances, the saying, the answer, the cause, the cure. Hallelujah. So that translation says something like this. And according to Psalm 107 and 20, he stretched out and extended his spoken word or the solution. He sent his word and it healed the diseases of humanity. Praise God. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, uh, in the, John 
1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus, is, and the Word became flesh. Jesus is that Word. Jesus is the Word of God. And so the Father, Jehovah, Yish, uh, Yahweh, we humbly honor His name, sent Yeshua, Jesus, into the world as the solution. He is, another translation put it as Jesus, is our medicine. Praise God. Hallelujah. He sent his dabar. He sent his word to heal our infirmities and diseases. We see a few words for healing. Number one, in Genesis 43 and 28, we see the word shalom. Now the word shalom uh, uh, is translated health in the Old Testament, beginning in the book of Genesis, and it means completeness, soundness, welfare, peace, safety, peace, tranquility, peace of human relationship. Hallelujah. So this health and healing, uh, it, first of all, is a continuous, constant life that Christ wants us to live. You know, I, I look back at it and I see Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 and it says, And God created man in his own image and in his own likeness. I'm telling you, Jehovah God, the creator with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, created man. He loves man. He loves humanity. And you know, the Bible said, And he breathed into man the breath of life. We are the express image of the Lord. And so do you think if you made a wonderful design, you know, you made a wonderful cake or you made a beautiful a piece of clothes that you made. Would you want it destroyed and mangled and damaged? No. So you think the God of heaven wants us sick? No. He wants us healed. He wants us whole. He wants us living a complete whole life, mind, emotion, body, spirit, and relationally. Praise God. This is the message of the kingdom of God. Isaiah 53. He was wounded for our transgression. The word wound means chalal, C-H-A-L-A-L, the Hebrew word. It means to profane, defile, pollute, desecrate, dishonor. He was wounded. He was desecrated. He was defiled. He was destroyed. He was passed through. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By and with his stripes we are healed. I believe that every one of those stripes... Every time that Roman soldier took that long rod that had nails and metal and glass and all types of piercing items and he slayed a part of Jesus' body and he ripped the skin out and the blood of precious Jesus spilled, I believe, I believe it was the price for a category of disease. You know, as a physician still practicing, I believe every one of those categories when he lashed out he was and that soldier pulled back he did not know every time by the stripes on jesus back he was creating a new category for the healing of mental illness when he lashed out and hit on the body of jesus and pulled the skin off his arm he was pain he was causing that blood to be spilled for uh, musculoskeletal conditions as he whipped across the back of Jesus he didn't realize that that strike that Jesus was receiving was the payment for spinal disorders when he was hitting Jesus across the chest I believe uh, that strike was for the respiratory healing I believe when he hit him across the heart it was for cardiovascular this is my interpretation because the Bible said with his, by his stripes, we are healed. We are already healed. Hallelujah. I declare that even as we are teaching tonight, healing is going to flow through your bodies. Everyone listening and watching why he sent his word to heal our diseases. While the word, not my might, not by my power, but it's by the word of God, you are going to be healed. I want you to get someone uh, who is a sick, laid up with corona, somebody who is in isolation, somebody who is laid up from other diseases. Uh, we have uh, focused on corona and forgot the other diseases. Hallelujah. We want to pray for someone who has terminal cancer. I don't care what it is. 
we're going to see in a short while what Jesus did. Another word for health, get this, in the book of Psalm chapter 42, the term for health, get this now, is Yeshua. Hallelujah. It means, hallelujah, Jesus, name in Hebrew is Yeshua. In Psalm 42, oh, I better just read it for you one time. The literal translation, Psalm 42, verse 11, get your Bibles, get your cup of coffee, join me tonight. I'm going to get into this word, and you're going to be healed by hearing this word tonight on healing. Share it, and then we're going to pray, because not only are you going to uh, uh, believe God for healing, the Lord told me, Get the people's fate up. If you can't believe God for keeping you in good health, then you won't believe him to keep you or to heal you if you get sick. If you don't believe God to heal you when you get sick, it's going to be a challenge for you to pray for others to be healed when they are sick. So God can use you to be an instrument of healing for the nations. If you can't believe God for healing, You'll never have the faith to believe him to raise the dead. But I have just decided to believe all of those things instantly and suddenly. Now you said, doctor, is God going to heal everyone? I know some people who die. Well, praise God. It doesn't matter who lives or who dies. Jesus is a healer. He determines his healing power. He told us not to pray with the sick. He said us to pray. Heal the sick. Jesus said to heal the sick. I've searched the scripture everywhere Jesus spoke. It, he healed the sick and he told his disciples to heal the sick. He didn't tell them pray for them. He didn't tell them visit them in the hospital. He didn't tell them bring them flowers and basket. He didn't tell them prophesy. And right now we're in a pandemic. We don't need a word of encouragement. We need the healing power of Jesus in the earth. Now if you want just a good message, you could go on a lot of other sites. Tonight we're dealing with the healing power because there are almost 20 million people with a disease called Corona and they need the healing power of Jesus. There are Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, atheists and Christians who need this word sent to them, who need this teaching coming into their air so they can get supernatural healing in their bodies. Praise God. This is for you tonight if you want to walk in supernatural safety. Well, Pastor, I don't know. I'm afraid. I understand you're afraid, but we're going to believe God and cast out fear. We're going to believe God to heal us supernaturally. We're going to do everything medically to stay safe, but we're going to believe God to keep us because we're covenant-keeping people. Praise be to God. So Psalm chapter 42, verse 11 Thank you for watching. Continue to watch and share. Uh, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. That word health in Psalm 42 and 11 is the Hebrew word Yeshua, which is Jesus in the Greek. It means Jesus is the who is the Jesus of my being? If I were to translate it, I would say, He is, Jesus is the healing and the well-being of my body and my life. Another translation says, He is medicine. The word Yeshua means salvation, save, heal, delivered, welfare, prosperity, victory, saving welfare. God in that verse is the Elohim. Elohim, I see Elohim TV here on live tonight. He is the judge, the magistrate. I see India, I see Heather, I see all of you watching. Thank you for joining. He is the health to us. He is healing to us. I'm going to just dive into the New Testament, go back over those teachings I've done earlier today. And uh, you will be blessed. Now, let's look at Jesus. Let's look at Jesus. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Exodus chapter 15. This talks about Jesus and who he is. Uh, Exodus chapter 50, uh, 15, verse 26. Uh, would you read it with me? Get your Bibles. Exodus 15 and 26. And it reads, 
and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God for your healing and health and supernatural breakthrough in your life, you and I have to hearken to the word of God. Jesus said it this way, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We are in a kingdom. We accept that Jesus, what is the kingdom of God? Jesus is telling us to seek. Well, I'm happy you asked. It means seek the king, Jesus, his way of doing things. Not our way, not our lifestyle. I don't care how young or old you are. I don't care which country you're from. I don't care what put you in because we're just one race, the human race. I don't care your nationality, your age, your culture, your profession, or your financial status. I'm telling you, if you don't have Jesus Christ as king and Lord who rules your life, and if you don't live your life according to this word, you are lost and you might be in a good state of health, but there is emptiness in your soul and in your spirit, and so you are spiritually sick. You are spiritually lost. And you're not walking in your full purpose yet. I know this is hard, but if you are not in there, this is not for you. This message and these messages, I'm sorry, is not for you. These messages of health healing and supernatural healing, whether in this life or when Jesus comes and gives us a new glorified body and we are recreated with him or those who are, who are dead in Christ that shall rise again and live with Christ Jesus when he comes in eternity as we live and rule with him in all of creation forever. That is the healing of the final healing when death and sickness. Oh, death, where is your sting? The grave would have lost its victory over these bodies that Satan came in and attacked. But I'm telling you, if you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior and you commit to living according to this word, I'm telling you, he has a promise. It is a covenant or a contract. You obey his word, he protects you. You obey his law, he heals you. You obey his principle, he protects you. You obey his word, he empowers you. You obey his word, he saves you for all eternity. You obey his word, if you even die in Christ, you shall live forever. With long life in this life, he will bless you. Is that a harsh word? Yes, it is. I believe it. I just believe the word of God. I don't care what happens to your life and mine. We're going to stand on what the word of God says. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. And I'm telling you, uh, I'm telling you there's a time for everyone that yes, pastor, doctor, uh, colleague, yes, there's a time when everyone at a certain place they're going to leave this life after their assignment is done. But I'm telling you, a lot of people have shortchanged their life because the devil came in and killed some of our loved ones and our uh, friends and loved ones. They died before their time. They died without fulfilling their purposes. They died outside of health. They died of incurable diseases. They died spending all their time in hospital. They died spending all their money in hospitals. Hallelujah. And I love hospital because I work in hospital and I still do. But I'm telling you what a joy it would be if you could receive this word and walk in your supernatural daily health and healing according to the covenant the God Jehovah made with his people that extends to us now through Jesus Christ. And 26. And he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give air to his commandments, and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee. The Lord said, I will not allow the diseases to be placed upon you. I will not allow them to be placed on you. If you hearken to my voice, you obey my commandments. I'm telling you, we're living in a world where people are doing their own thing. They're eating what they want to. They're living how they want to. And I'm telling you, God said, that's not a contractual agreement. The agreement is you obey my laws. You obey my commandments. You live for me. You live whole you do what is right what I prescribed in my word for you to do you meditate on the word of God day and night you keep your hearts in worship you keep your heart free of bitterness and unforgiveness you keep your heart free from pain and and disgrace and shame and I will if you obey my word and receive my power in your life I will keep every disease from you 
For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Exodus 15 and 26 is the first time we see the term, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Another translation is, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am Rapha. That's another term for health and healing. I am the God Rapha. I am the Lord. The God that healeth. The healing, the cure. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Continue to worship. I'll take one quick second. Thank you very much. Let's get into the New Testament, Jesus, and the ministry of Jesus, and the healing power of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go Matthew chapter 11. Let's go to Matthew chapter 11. If you're with this, shout hallelujah, shout glory, shout praise the Lord. We're going to dive into this because you are going to be agents of healing. You are going to receive your healing tonight. And if you have any healing issues, if you need healing in your mind, your body, or a relationship, or any aspect of your life tonight, we're going to stand in agreement to pray and have you heal tonight. I don't pray for the sick. I believe God to heal the sick. Well, why do you say that, doctor? Well, I'll give you a good example. As a physician, as patients come to me, I don't hope they get healed. I don't hope they get better. When they come to me, they come to me to get them better. So if I'm a natural physician, and I have the faith, and the patients have the faith in the medical training, the development, and my character, and the standard of care, and go to any doctor and give them the standard of care because they trust them and their treatment and their practice and the institution and the structure of medical practice in your country. You trust that doctor for immediate results. No one goes to the doctor just hoping and wishing. Uh, I don't know. I hope I get better. I hope this doctor know what he's doing. I hope I can get, you know, this you know, headache gone. I, I hope this sprained ankle can, you know, I don't know, but I'm hoping maybe he can fix it. Maybe he can. I don't know. I'm hoping. I'm desiring. We'll see what happens. No. When you go to your doctor, you go with confidence that that doctor is going to prescribe you and direct you the best treatment to get the best cure. And many times we want a cure right away. We want a shot. We want some tablets to deal with that pain, to deal with that irritation, to deal with those vomiting symptoms. We want immediate cure. If we can trust a natural physician, what much more can we trust and depend on the certainty of the great physician, Jesus Christ? Well, I'm going to help you look at his credentials. Hallelujah <laughs> tonight. Let's look at the credential of Jesus, the great physician. That's going to help you and I have confidence in who he is as the physician and the doctor and the healer that he said he is. And we're going to see what he can do. Matthew chapter 11, 1 to 6. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed from there thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. Here is John calling his disciples and say, go to Jesus, see if he is really the healer and the Christ, and see if he's really Yeshua. And delivers. John was in prison, John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus. Verse 3, and said unto them, are you he that should come or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight. Praise God. I'm telling you, if people who are blind see, that's a supernatural power of God. Amen. Jesus said, Tell John, don't tell him I said it. Let him see and know what's happening. On the streets in my life and ministry, Jesus was telling John's disciple. John was in prison at that time. Jesus told him, go show John again those things which you hear and which you've also proven to be true. 
Verse 5, the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Jesus said, you John disciples, go and tell John, I'm going to pray in the next few minutes. Get ready. I need all of you praying and studying and getting this word. We're talking about Jesus, the healer, the physician now. Jesus told them, the, lame, the blind are seeing, the lame who had paralysis are now walking, the lepers have their leprosy and their skin healed. If I were to break this up in the medical, the ophthalmologist of Jesus' ministry came out, the blind were seeing. Jesus was an orthopedic surgeon. The lame began to walk. The lepers were cleansed. He was a dermatologist. Their skin were made whole. He was an internist on an infectious disease. He cleansed leprosy. He was an internist. The deaf hair, he did autometry. He was a heal air conditions. And the dead are raised. I'm telling you to heal somebody, but to see them raised from the dead, praise God. Let's move quickly. The ministry power of Jesus. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Hallelujah. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. I learned a pattern. There is a pattern in the word of God and Jesus had a pattern. He would preach and teach the kingdom of God and then people would be healed and delivered and set free. I found a pattern for you and I tonight is if we use what Jesus' method was, we're going to see supernatural healing in our lives and our family and our loved ones and everyone the Lord commands us to. He didn't beg us to. Jesus is not asking us to. He's commanded every believer who believes in Christ to heal the sick. Praise God. So Jesus began to teach in the king, the kingdom of God. What's the kingdom? The rulership, the righteous rule of the king. Jesus is king and Lord, and he wants every person, person to be healed. We talked about it earlier. Jesus wants to heal people for a purpose. He's not going to heal people and they go back to, you know, living corrupt lives. He's not going to heal them and they go back to drinking. He's not going to heal them and they go back to not serving him. Jesus heals with a purpose. If you made up in your mind, Lord, I want to serve you. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to repent of my sins. I'm going to forgive everyone I need to forgive. This is the last day I'm living, the life I'm living. I'm telling you, Jesus will heal you. The Bible said, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. It means the Lord said, I want to give you long life so that you can show forth my salvation. I tell everyone that's listening or watching, the Lord wants to keep you healed and whole so you can continue to show the mighty salvation and works of the Lord. God is not going to heal you from HIV for you to go back living promiscuous, homosexual, adulterous lifestyle. No, he's not going to heal you uh, from STDs and cure your body if you're going to go back living the same way. I'm telling you, praise God, as I live according to the word of God, as I preach the gospel, I thank God, God has kept me continuously healed. I believe in supernaturally being kept healed. I'm telling you, God, I'm telling you, he's been faithful. I'm not on any medication. Haven't had to be on medication in my life thus far. To God be the glory because we stand on the promises of Jesus Christ and we give him all the glory. You can too if you trust his word. If you live according to his word, he will keep you supernaturally cured. Have you taken medicine? Yes, I have uh, for a few days. 
You know, I, I felt something, I prayed, and I saw God, and I saw the Lord. He said, now, I need you to rest. I need you to take some tablets. I need you to see a doctor. Just check it out. The Holy Spirit will tell you, check a doctor. And when I went there, now I know what the doctor thinks, and I take their medicine, and the Holy Spirit tell me to, and I tell you, I stand and come home, and I pray, and I call my prayer partners, and I begin to worship, and I begin to repent, and I begin to meditate on the Word, and I begin to declare not just some old good talking words, I begin to speak. Excuse me, the 200, the 300 scriptures of healing we have here, I begin to speak that over my life and my body. I begin to stand on the word. I begin to touch and agree, hallelujah, with my wife and other prayer partners for supernatural healing. And I stand in that word until the, my mind receives it. I'm telling you, the same way Jesus heals and uh, forgives you of sins, it's the same way he heals your body. Instantly, suddenly, and continuously. The same way you are forgiven of all your sin and the devil say you're not forgiven. You are a liar. You are unfaithful. You are unjust. You are unfit to be used of the Lord because of your life, because of your failure. It's the same way he tries to make you doubt God's word for your healing. But you have to speak the word. You have to let the word of God pay, play. Sometimes my wife and I, we just put on the word of God and we let the word play. From the beginning to the end, we put on the healing scriptures. We begin to speak the scriptures. We put on the words of Jesus. And we let those words play to fill our mind and our spirit. We turn off the news network. And we get into the word of God. And we begin to study the word. And we begin to meditate on the scriptures of promises of healing. And we get that in our spirit. We get that in our mind. And our mind, all of a sudden, we sometimes go on a fast and pray and our mind all of a sudden begins to believe by his stripes we are healed all of a sudden all of a sudden the barrier that hindered us from receiving the truth of that word is removed supernaturally and all of a sudden we just believe his word that by his stripes I am really healed and my mind begins to get it and my body begins to receive it and it, the body begins to fight but every day I keep reminding my body and mind that by his stripes I am healed. I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord above all. My brother, I wish that you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper. So I begin to say, Lord, my soul is going to prosper. I'm not going to let depression and fail and worry and defeat take my soul down. My soul is my mental health. Praise God. It's the place of my thinking. It's my drive. It's my motivation. I begin to prosper and be in good health even as my soul prosper. My health springs up. My soul springs up and I begin to believe Jesus for who he said he is until my healing comes. It's just that simple. And I want to let you know Jesus is not afraid of no physician. I'm telling you, when Jesus healed me, I go back to the doctor say, check out that blood. Make sure that is good. They come back, all, everything is clean. I say, yeah, I'm going back to my doctor. Check out that scan again. Check it one more time. I've been praying and standing on God. Hallelujah. The doctor said, I'm sorry, nothing has changed. I go back in the prayer and faith and in the word of God and giving. And I say, I'm coming back, doctor. And I go back and I check it. And I said, check that scan again. And they might say, oh, it's getting better. I said, okay, I'm coming back. I go back to prayer and worship and fasting and eating right and exercising and living right and doing my part naturally while I meditate on the word and worship. I go back to that doctor. I said, doctor, check that scan again. And the scan is completely whole. Praise God. Because of who Jesus is. So Matthew 4 and 23. Jesus healed in Matthew chapter 4, verse 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria. This is Jesus. And they brought unto him all. Say all. Somebody type all. They brought everyone that was sick. I'm telling you, God is not a respecter. He will heal HIV as well as he'll heal sinus. He'll heal a buck toe. He'll heal a sore throat. He'll heal a, a flu. He'll heal a corona. He will heal a heart condition. He will heal cancer. It doesn't matter. When they brought them to Jesus, Jesus didn't say, oh, I can't heal HIV. I can't heal terminal cancer. I can't heal pancreatic cancer. I can't heal a stroke. Jesus was able to heal every single thing. They brought all that were sick. 
and taken with divers. Divers being different types of diseases. Now sickness and diseases are two different things. Sickness is if someone has runny nose and sneezing and maybe a cough. Those are the symptoms. Those are the sickness. But I'm telling you, if that sickness lingers, it might end up as a pneumonia. That's the disease process. Someone might have hypertension for a long period of time. And that hypertension is a sickness. But if they let it go, they might, they might end up with a heart attack or a stroke. That's a cardiovascular disease. So sicknesses, in my interpretation, advances to diseases. Oh, but I'm so grateful that Jesus not only heals the first signs and symptoms of conditions, but he can even heal all diverse diseases. That means when the heart attack has settled in, when the kidneys have failed, the end-stage kidney, the end-stage heart disease, the end-stage stroke, the end-fourth-stage cancer, Jesus healed them at the beginning of the symptoms all the way to the diverse diseases. Praise God. Hallelujah. And torments. He healed those who were tormented. That deals with mental health. I'm telling you, Jesus heals every category of diseases, even the mental health. Do you know that, you know, if you're physically well, you know, I did neuropsychiatry for 10 years, and I've seen people who battle with neurological and psychiatric and psychological diseases, and it is debilitating. Depression and bipolar and psychosis is debilitating. Substance and drug abuse personality disorder is troubling I'm telling you but when God touched them and cured them and healed them that is the greatest joy I've seen in people's lives they could go back to being mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and children they can go back to you know functioning in their families and their workplaces uh, so Jesus came to deal with torment so according to scripture torment is something that needs to be healed you don't have to keep your torment tonight Jesus can heal you of it. And those which were possessed with devils. I'm telling you, Jesus can heal and cast out devils too. He did it back then. If you're troubled by a demonic spirit, and yeah, you've tried everything you could and got all the tests you could and all the medical treatment and this stubborn thing wouldn't leave, Jesus said, this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. You need a supernatural healing from God to drive out an infirmity that's probably related to a strong demonic presence controlling your life. A strong curse that came down through your generation. And we're going to pray for all types of healing, diseases, sicknesses, torments, and demonic oppression tonight in Jesus' name. Those that were possessed with devils, those which were lunatics, hallelujah, that's in the Bible. And those that had palsy, and he healed them. You know, another thing I want to tell you about Jesus and his ministry. Jesus was so full of love and compassion. In order for you to be healed, the Lord told me this tonight and earlier today and my other session. In order for you to be healed, praise God. Uh, Pastor Bullard, God bless you. Thanks for joining. Uh, in order for you to be healed, I want you to let know you got to be patient. Can you imagine they brought all those people to Jesus? Nowhere in scripture the Bible said Jesus just, you know, did a magic wand prayer and they were all here. He laid with each one of them and prayed with every one of them until each and every one of them were healed. Can you imagine by the thousands? Many of us don't have the faith to persevere for our own healing, but God is going to change our hearts tonight. Because if you have the faith, you need the faith to stand because God needs healers. We're in a pandemic. Almost 20 million people infected. And that's not the other diseases sweeping around the world. God needs healing. Jesus is a healer. Our Lord and the kingdom that we are a part of is a kingdom of healing and of health. He is our cure. He is our medicine. He is our treatment. Praise be to God. So Jesus told me he laid hands and healed them all. The thousands. Jesus, I could see him now. One by one, just laying hands on everyone, young and old, black and white, rich and poor, paralyzed, lame, those who are sicknesses, who are just having basic symptoms, those who are the development of diseases, those who 
every manner of sickness and disease. Jesus took time and laid hands and healed every single life. You know, my wife and I, when we go to mission uh, in South uh, East Asia and throughout Africa, man, we have gone. And after we finished preaching and teaching the kingdom, people came up and we had to lay hands. Some of you were there at some of those meetings in Asia. And we laid hands and prayed for hundreds, thousands of people through that period of time. Lay hands. They came and we ministered healing <clears throat> and deliverance. And I'm telling you, I had a glimpse of what it took Jesus. Can you imagine Jesus healing all of them? It must have taken days for him to lay hands and heal and pray for every single one. You know what it shows me? The compassion of Jesus. He didn't want to leave until he laid hands <clears throat> and healed every single person because he is a God that's healing. He's a God of healing. <clears throat> he is a God of the health. And it is his desire that we prosper and be in good health even as our soul prospers. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 8, verse 7. We're looking at Jesus, New Testament models of healing. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 8, verse 7. And Jesus said unto them, I will come and heal them. This is Jesus talking to the centurion. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servants shall be healed. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed. I've learned something. You can walk with Jesus. You can talk with Jesus. But to believe him for healing is something that takes great faith. See, it's easy for you and I to go to our doctor and believe that he's going to instantly. I'm a physician. When people come to me, I, I, I don't let them leave without me healing them. I don't let them leave without me giving the best treatment and cure and method option because I believe in people's healing. They come to me and trust me as a physician. And I, I'm telling you, I have thousands of patients and thousands I've seen over the years. And, they, you know, I believe for their healing. That's the mark of my success as a natural physician. But it amazes me that people don't believe that the great physician. They don't go to a doctor. None of you pays a doctor and just hopes, boy, maybe I get healed. Maybe I go to this doctor and maybe he got something in his office or something he can prescribe. No, you go to the doctor because I have a health issue. I'm sick. I have a disease. And I need immediate. So that's the same way you have to go to Jesus. You have to go to him as, Lord, I need your healing now. I believe who you are. But, of course, this takes faith. That's why we're building up your faith tonight in the word so you can see. So when you go to him, you go to him believing for the supernatural power. In fact, his supernatural is natural. If you get this tonight, even as you're listening to this, what you call supernatural healing will be natural to live healthy. It'll be natural for you to walk in daily health. It'll be natural for you to walk in the covenant of health. Does that mean you won't take a little Panadol here and there? No, I'm not saying that. Does it mean you don't go to your doctor and get your regular checkup? I'm not saying that. Does it mean you don't exercise and eat right and do the natural healthy things according to the word of God and health practices? No, I'm just saying you obey the natural laws, but you apply the spiritual laws and you can walk in the daily covenantal blessing of health that he has. So this centurion now amazes me, just like he amazed Jesus. Here is an unsaved man. You and I are covenant people. You and I are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And here is this man who's not even saved. He's a sinner believing for the healing of a servant. Oh, my God. I wish today that many believers would step out of their own issues and step into being an agent for healing. I want to challenge every believer I know there's a lot of preaching online. That's why I only come in the Lord tells me. Because, you know, I just don't want to, you know, this, you know, we got a crisis and a pandemic. We need healing. Hallelujah. We need healers. Jesus needs people to show forth his glory in and through, through healing. I don't need an encouraging word. I need a word that says, Lord.
Lord, he's going to keep me and my family from diseases. I need a word that if a relative gets sick uh, from corona or anything else, I know the word on how to get them healed by standing on the word and giving them that word. I need the word to tell 20 million people around the world and families around every nation that Jesus is a healer. That's a covenant promise that if you trust him and receive it, you can have divine daily instant now healing in your life so the centurion jesus said i've not seen this amount of faith the centurion knew from the book of psalm 104 and 107 he sent his word to heal our diseases somehow somehow this centurion got the faith i don't know where he read psalm 107 verse 20 that says he sent his word to heal their diseases in 2020 we're still trying to get people to believe he sent his word well that centurion had a revelation that jesus was the sent word the hebrew for that we said earlier was shalak and the word is dabar that jesus was the dabar the spoken express word business cure from jehovah that jesus is the healer he is the medicine. And that centurion know he was talking to the medicine that was sent somehow. His faith skipped through so many things. His faith went back to Psalm 107, verse 20. And he knew, the centurion knew, that Jesus was this word sent by Jehovah Yahweh to heal. And he said to him, if you're the word, you don't have to come in my house. Just send the word. That you are the word. In the beginning was the word. And my centurion. Jesus looked at his disciples in amazement. That an uncircumcised Roman Gentile person. Could touch him in such a way. And could see who he is. You know that many people are around Jesus. But don't know who he is. That I may know him. If we know who he is. We'll walk in divine health. Praise God. I'm going to move on. The New Testament Greek word for healing or heal is therapeuo therapy therapo y-o-o is the same word for therapy so when jesus heals when the bible said the new testament he heals them he gives them therapy praise god hallelujah you go to your doctor or you come to me hallelujah we give you therapy we checked out every aspect of your life and prescribe a therapy. Sometimes it's medicine, sometimes it's surgery, physiotherapy, a referral, uh, imaging tests, uh, imaging, uh, or some other new uh, test modality, gamma radiation, or rays, or whatever, gamma knife. We use therapy to heal people. When you come to Jesus, Jesus gives you therapy. That's what heal means in the New Testament, therapy. Acts, I mean, sorry, Matthew chapter 8, verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. I prophesy tonight, as you believe, so be it done unto you. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, even as you hear these scriptures tonight, and we're going to get into about 20 or 30 more tonight. Let's move quickly. He said, even as you hear and believe, some of you listening will be healed instantly of diseases and um, sicknesses, infirmities that have held you bound for a long time. You're going to be instantly healed. Some of you are going to send us to people in isolation. They're going to be healed. They're going to have tests done, and it's going to be completely healed because Jesus did it and not us. Matthew chapter 8 verse 16 when the evening was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word there again the daba the word of God was used to cast out spirits I, I don't have time to tell you the amount of times we use the word of God to cast out strongholds in people's life it is real I've experienced it I'm a Bible believing physician and heal all that were sick. That it may be fulfilled, Matthew 7 and 17, that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, <clears throat> himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Jesus came and took away our sins, and he came to take away our sicknesses. 
There's no separation. We separated it. We tell people, come to the altar, accept Jesus as Lord. He'll take away your sins. But we leave them in sickness and in cancer and in diabetes and in hypertension and in depression and in fear and in doubt and in brokenness and heart disease and palpitation and, 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 and you know, um, colitis and gastrointestinal problems and acid reflux and headaches and migraines. No, 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 no. According to Isaiah, surely Jesus himself took on all of the infirmities that exist the man on himself, took it to the cross and bore it for us. Praise God. So if Jesus bore something for us, why do you want to take it? Hallelujah. He paid the price already for us. Why do we want to keep it? Hallelujah. I, I, I laugh at some people sometimes. They say, my heart attack. My hypertension, oh, my high blood pressure, my high blood sugar. Well, if you keep keeping it, leave it, it's going to stay in your body. But when you said no, that high blood pressure, hallelujah, that I'm working on getting rid of, hallelujah, because I want to be cured. That diabetes, I want to be cured. That migraines, I want to be cured. See, you have to be angry enough with sickness and diseases for it to leave your body. If you're comfortable with colitis, if you're comfortable with uh, rheumatoid arthritis, if you're comfortable with cancer, well, that's going to that's gonna be your choice. But if you're sick and tired and tired and tired of the sickness, you have to make up in your mind that I am not going to carry this thing. I'm going to eat different. I'm going to live right. I'm going to meditate on the word of God and I'm going to stand on his word until this thing shows up in my body and it shows up in my lab results. It shows up when I go to my doctor's next visit. My pressure will be regulated. I would have lost the weight. I'm eating healthier. My blood sugar is back to normal and my internal organs have regenerated and they've healed themselves after a period of time. Those that can be healed and I will believe God to do the rest because he is a healer. Praise God. Matthew 9 and 35. Jesus. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages. He didn't just stay home. I'm telling you, Jesus is very convinced about his healing ministry. Would you be the same way? I mean, he didn't stay at home. He went to every city. He ran to every village, teaching in their synagogues. Now, this is for those who want to stay home and don't like to go to church. The devil is a liar. Jesus went to the synagogue. He went to church, and he preached there the kingdom of God, and he healed them in the synagogue. And he preached the gospel of the kingdom. People ask me, why you preach the kingdom so much? Well, I'm just following Jesus. I preached the kingdom, and I found out many times in the nations of the world and on television and where radio or wherever the Lord opens the door for me to be used, when I begin to preach the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the Lordship of Jesus, accepting Jesus as Lord and coming into his kingdom and being a part of a body of people who are sick ambassadors of the kingdom of God and, and you know coming out of the kingdom of darkness where Satan is the king and accepting the lordship of Jesus Christ to control every aspect of your life hallelujah people get saved and know Jesus is Lord I'm telling you immediately after that we pray for people and they get healed of every incurable thing it's like when you come into Jesus the Bible says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you when we preach the kingdom all of a sudden people who are locked up and bound by sickness by disease by torment by demons I believe the kingdom message and salvation breaks that lock and chain of them they get set free they get delivered they let go of unforgiveness and bitterness and hurt and pain and disappointment and rejection over the years and I'm telling you they open their heart to the Holy Spirit and the blood and the name of Jesus and all of a sudden yokes are broken people are transformed they don't hate anymore. They're filled with love. Uh, they're filled with the power of God. And all of a sudden, things that were in their life, diseases and sicknesses that held them bound are broken and they are set free. This is what we've experienced when we practice this model of what Jesus did. Jesus went about all the city and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom 
and healing every sickness and every disease, every sickness, every disease among all, all among the people. Praise God. Matthew 10 and 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. You don't pray for people who need demons cast out. You cast demons out. You don't pray for people who are bound and oppressed. You cast the devil out and set people free. Praise God. To cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses or sickness and all manner of disease. Verse 7, Matthew 10 and 7. And as you go, Jesus talking to his disciples. And as you go, preach, say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Jesus didn't beg his disciples. He didn't plead with them. He didn't make an arrangement or some type of contract with them. He told them as a command. I believe many people are going to miss God because they, you and I, as saints of God, has to understand that Jesus gave a commandment to heal. He didn't beg us to heal the sick. He didn't beg us to heal the leper. He didn't beg us to raise the dead. Uh, you know, raising the dead shouldn't be some miraculous thing that happens. It should be part of our daily ministry as believers. Not the apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, or bishop. Hallelujah. It's supposed to be these are the signs that should follow them that believe in my name. They will heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. This is a commandment. I want to challenge you tonight and I. These are the commandments that Jesus left his disciples and to the church and to us. We don't just pray for people and visit them in the hospital and take them a, you know, box of chocolates, praise God. No, that's not the supernatural, powerful church of Jesus Christ. We go, when I show up, healing has to take place. Cure has to take place. When I show up, in the past, to someone's house, or someone's church, or someone's ministry, or to someone's family, they come to me. I'm believing God for healing. I thank God He called me as a physician. I I operate in healing. I I I don't tolerate disease and sickness. I don't tolerate mental torment and challenges. I want complete healing in my life, my family's life, and everyone around me, and all of my patients, and everywhere the Lord will send me. All of the leaders that we serve, I want complete healing. We are going to be a people that are healed, whole, delivered, set free, and blessed in Jesus' name. Praise God. I'm going to take a drink of water on that. Praise God. Let's move on. Matthew chapter 14. I'm building your faith on the healing scriptures tonight. Get ready. We're going to pray. You begin to pray. Write these scriptures down. Matthew 14 and 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. Oh, that's one of my favorite passages. The Lord told me, in order for you to administer my healing power, you have to move with compassion. Many people are cold and bitter and angry and selfish. They will never see the supernatural power of healing. Hallelujah for the last you know, close to 15 to 20 years, I've seen healing because God broke my heart so that I can have compassion. You know what compassion means? To extend mercy and sympathy to the person, external person involved. It's to extend empathy, thoughtfulness, kindness, goodness, in spite of the person's own mistakes that's what compassion is in spite of the person's fault or mistake in being in the condition they are in Jesus extended compassion oh Lord I pray for compassion today would you say Lord give me a heart of compassion somebody type there Lord give me a heart of compassion Oh, I don't just want me to be blessed. I don't just want me to be healed. That's why we spend all day today saying that. I asked my wife, I thank God for her. She gave permission for us to come on all day today. 
sacrifice everything today because we we just were moved with compassion because we want to see people saved we want to see people healed we want to see people delivered most of all we want to see the name and the power of Jesus glorified we want to see people around the world every race tribe nationality grouping touched by the special touch and love of Jesus Christ I'm telling you, nobody can give that love like Jesus. And so the Bible said Jesus was first moved with compassion. And he prayed and healed all of them. Praise God. Matthew chapter 14, verse 35. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. I'm telling you, Jesus' ministry was so powerful. People traveled from near and far, came to him, and they didn't leave anyone who was sick in the city. He brought it. They wait, wait, you know, they brought everybody out for Jesus to heal them, and Jesus delivered every single time. He is a healing God. Praise God. Mark, Matthew, Mark, chapter 1. Let's get into Mark. Let's move quickly. A few more scriptures, the belly of faith. Then we get ready to pray. I'm teaching tonight. I'm not hollering. I'm not shouting. I want you to sit down. I want you to receive this and hear this clearly. Mark chapter 1 verse 32. Let's go to verse 30. But Simon's wife, wife's mother, lies sick of a fever. And Anon, they tell him of her. And he came, this is Jesus, and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Oh, glory to God. And immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto him. I mean, Jesus was so anointed, full of the power of heaven to heal. He came to heal that he, he didn't even pray. He just touched her and lifted her, lifted her up. And she immediately, the fever left her powerfully, supernaturally. Because he is the word of God. Verse 32 of Mark chapter 1. And at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils, and all the city was gathered together at the door. They brought everyone at his door. You have to be desperate. You have to be hungry. You have to pursue Jesus if you want your miracle, your supernatural healing. Verse 34. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Luke, the book of Luke, Luke a physician, a doctor. I love Luke, praise God. Luke chapter 4 verse 40, you've read this before. Now when the sun was set, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him and he laid hands on every one of them. We see it here. In other places, the Bible said they brought him and he healed them. But Luke, the physician, as a physician, he described this so perfectly. In Luke chapter 4, he showed the physician side of Jesus. He didn't only just heal them blanket like Matthew, the tax collector, said. He did Luke, the physician, uh, and physicians touch people. Praise God. You know, we examine, we touch people, we feel, we touch, and we, you know. But it, Luke recorded that Jesus laid hands on every single one of them that were sick and healed them. Hallelujah. What a compassionate healer we have. Well, if he can do that for them, he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. There's nothing stopping him from healing you and I today. Bless God in the name of Jesus. He is the same healer. And he, I'm telling you, uh, can you imagine the healing was two parts? Two parts. One part, the people had to find out where Jesus is. I want to speak to you tonight. You and I have to find out where Jesus is. And they, they went, after their work was done, they went, for some of them, probably, probably according to this story and many of the other um, teaching, that they came from near and far, and they brought all people, all manner of diseases and sicknesses. They cleared the healthcare facilities, and they brought them. They tarried, they looked, they walked. They probably had water, and they had food. They had to push wheelchairs. They had to lift beds. Can you imagine the sight? 
the people. See, my point is when you are healing, you have to press your way. You have to push your way beyond just the ordinary. You got to say, God, no matter what it takes, I'll come hopping, running, spinning. I'll get a friend to help me. I'm going to meet Jesus. And when I go this time to the healing service of Jesus, I'm not leaving until I'm completely healed. Can you imagine them just waiting there as Jesus came? As he was at number one and they were number 1,000. They waited all night as Jesus waited, laid hands, one, and waited till they were healed. The next one, Jesus went to number two, laid hands. Hallelujah. Heal out one of palsy. Number three. Can you imagine the people waiting in line? without complaining, without murmuring. They didn't have a schedule. They didn't think about work. They didn't think about family. They didn't think about home. They came to meet Jesus. They came for an encounter with Jesus and they didn't care if it took all night. They were going to wait. That's how I feel to stay in the Word. I just want to wait in the Word until this explodes in my spirit. I just want to wait before the presence of the Lord in his word. Sometimes some people rush their miracle. You know, they're too busy. You can't get your healing and your supernatural miracle and your supernatural touch from the Lord just rushing out of prayer. You got to sometimes wait in prayer all night. You got to wait in prayer for two days. You got to put in some extra fasting. You might have to pray all week on your face. Hallelujah. I know I've been praying for some loved ones and some people. And I'm telling you, sometime it took morning, noon, and night. Praying in the spirit. Praying the word of God. Fasting. Standing on the promises of God. Believing God to heal a loved one of some condition that I knew if I didn't pray. Hallelujah. The enemy would have destroyed them. I stood in the gap and waited day in and day out until the miracle was completed and all of a sudden Jesus by his mighty power did it pray that's the people's response and then Jesus response is he came and healed based on the expectation one by one as he touched them the virtue that was in his life the anointing and the anointed one the anointing that was on him. How do I know? Release from him into the other people. I'm glad you asked. Because before he was healing them, in Luke 4 and 18, he says, in a declaration, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. That means he has taken the oil and he has smeared the oil. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. Jesus made a declaration in the temple that he is anointed. He, the word anointed means to pour into, to smear he has been smeared with the presence of God. He has been given special abilities and enablement by the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So when he went out and laid hands on every one of them, he was walking in the declaration of who he is. Get ready to pray. Some of you should be praying now. Praying for your own body. <clears throat> praying for people in your city who are sick. Praying for your nation that may be rattled with corona or, or lockdown. People are afraid and anxious and need a miracle. Or you just get someone on your mind. Get someone in your congregation, a family, a loved one. You know they're sick and they're terminally ill. You, you're hearing this teaching tonight and you're getting ready to pray. Don't just spectate. Build up the faith. Share this with someone. Build their faith. Hallelujah. I'm taking you through the scripture. I don't want my word. I want you to see what the word of God says. Luke 16 verse 17. And he came down with them and stood in the plain in the company of the disciples. And a great multitude of people out of Judea and Jerusalem. And from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon which came to hear him. And to be healed of their diseases. 
And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, verse 18 of Luke 6, and they were healed. Praise God. Jesus didn't leave one person unhealed. I want to challenge you tonight, and thus the same Jesus you and I serve, I declare tonight everyone that's on this page listening and watching as we begin to pray, there is no person that is on this page that has heard this teaching and continues to hear it will not be healed by that same Jesus. If you have that faith, say amen tonight. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for they went, for there went virtue out of him and healed them. Hallelujah. The virtue of healing, the grace, the anointing of healing was so strong on Jesus that they said if we can just touch him, virtue of the healing grace would flow. Ooh, glory to God. What a Jesus we serve. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Didn't Jesus didn't send disciples to pray for the diseases? Jesus sent his disciples to cure diseases. I want to shift your mind from praying for the sick to curing the sick. I want you to change your mind from just, you know, receiving a sickness and being cured. I want you to believe God for those who need to be sick. It's a command to cure the sick. Pastors, leaders, God has called us to cure the sick. I don't want just a word. I want a word of cure. I, I challenge every believer, cure some people and watch your ministry grow. You don't have to blast it. Just, you know, hallelujah. You don't have to click, you know, share, 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 share. Uh, no, no, no. Start healing some people and the, the fame of Jesus went through and the nation, all of Jerusalem, Judea, and throughout the entire world at that time. In fact, his healing ministry was so powerful. He had to tell them not to tell anyone. Praise God. Luke 9 and 2. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. It's a command. Luke 13 and 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. This shows that some diseases are caused by a spirit of infirmity. I only can say what the Bible said. Some of you don't like it. You don't believe in spirits and demonic causes. Uh, for some causes of diseases, that's your business. I'm reading what the Word of God says. I don't care what anyone say or feel. There are some causes from Scripture that shows some things were by a spirit of infirmity. Jesus was a healer. He healed them by the thousands. And his believers and followers today are still healing people. I have seen supernatural healing. My wife and I are the power of God's hand by the multitudes. No one has to convince me otherwise. And I go into the medical arena and still practice good medicine, great medicine. But if someone believes believe in God for healing, my wife, with her prayer and I and all the believers are going to pray and work with the doctors and work with everyone who has any report. And we're going to believe God with people. Just know that. I'm not talking about throwing away doctors. In fact, Satan didn't develop doctors and nurses and medicine. No devil and demon developed that organization. Hallelujah. That industry. Satan is the devil. He's the destroyer of humanity. He will never create the field of medicine. If you look in the Old Testament, the priest, Jesus, when he healed the lepers, he said, go show yourself to the priest. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 13, verse 18, and Leviticus 14 and 48, the priests in the Old Testament were the physicians. The physicians were the priests. So what I'm doing is natural. This is God's order. I'm supposed to be a priest and a physician. A physician and a priest. There's no separation. They are the one and the same. It is God. So when Jesus healed the lepers, or he healed the ten, he said, go show yourself to the priest. It was the priest who examined the patients to see if there was an outbreak, if there was leprosy in the house, or if there was an outbreak of disease. They did the public health. They did the health management. They did the quarantining. Uh, 
I'm not saying throw away the medical field. I love the medical field. I'll continue to do it as long as God gives me the strength. But I'm going to preach the gospel as well. And I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to practice medicine as long as Jesus gives me the strength. And both are the same and they're one. They're curing people. They're helping people. They're serving people with compassion and love. And through the Spirit of God and through the love of Jesus, my hands, my life, your hands, your life, and your body being an extension of Jesus Christ's love and healing and compassion. Luke 13 and 11. The woman had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years and was bowed, to, bowed together and could in no wise lift of herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said, Woman, thou art loose from this infirmity. The sickness that has held you be loose in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's move on quickly. Get ready to pray. <clears throat> Luke chapter 20, verse 20. Luke chapter 20, verse 37. And you're going to have to go back over this and go back over the previous teaching. I'm moving quickly. Luke chapter 20, verse 37. Now that the dead are raised, even Moses saw Moses shoot at the bush when he called the Lord, the God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob. For he is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Let's look at the book of John quickly. The book of John. I hope this is building your faith today. I hope this is building your faith. John chapter 5, verse 4. I'm building your faith in Jesus the healer. Get ready to pray. You know, we need to pray. We're free. We're going to pray until people are healed and touched in their mind, body, soul, and spirit. And they're going to be uplifted in their lives because we know the healer and he loves us and he loves you. First of all, to get your healing, you have to know that Jesus loves you. If you feel hated and disgusted and hate yourself, and you can't receive that special love of Jesus in healing. You have to know that he loves you. In spite of what you have done and I have done, he loves you and I. He's not angry. He's angry with the sin, but he can restore and redeem us and he wants to heal us. Amen. So receive what he's done on Calvary's cross. John chapter 5 verse 4. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Jesus came to bring whole. There was a pool of Bethsaida and every so often the Lord would send an angel to stir up that pool. People would step in and they were made whole. Praise the Lord. Verse 14, after Jesus finded him, he saw a man with a bed. Sorry, verse 8, Jesus said unto him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Then in verse 14, afterward Jesus of John, chapter 5, verse 14, afterward Jesus finded him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art whole. Whole! That man not only was healed of paralysis, but his life was made whole instantly. Hallelujah. That means his economic, his financial, his mental state, his heart, his relationships, his, 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 his energy, his strength, his Hope is vigor for the future. Was made whole. John chapter 5 verse 21. For as the father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the son quickened whom he will. Jesus said, I'm going to heal and quicken whomsoever I will. But we see from scripture where he healed and touched everybody. John chapter 12 verse 1. I'm moving quickly. John chapter 12, verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus, which were, was, had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Much more, verse 9. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Do you know raising from the dead is a form of healing? I'm telling you, if somebody is completely dead, their heart is stopped, uh, you know, their lungs are, you know, 
operating and exchanging the oxygen and carbon dioxide and the muscles have gone into rigor mortis and the energy supplies have stopped and Jesus heals them. I'm telling you, and uh, they die and Jesus heals them. How many know that's healing? Praise God. That's the supernatural end spectrum of healing. When sickness and disease are set in and brought a person to death and Jesus heals them. So if Jesus can heal the dead, what is your little hypertension and diabetes? What is a little corona? What's a little flu? What's a little pneumonia? What's a little cancer for Jesus to heal? for the night. I wanted to talk about miracles. We're going to leave that for another time. 1 Corinthians 12 and 9. This is for the believer and the church. The authority of the believer and the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Keys that Jesus left to the church for your healing. Get ready for us to pray the faith that we see in this word. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 9. For to another the faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. I release upon everyone as a us the gift of healing. Some of you have the gift of healing. 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. And God set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, third teachers, after that, miracles. Praise God. We're going to deal with miracles, the supernatural power of God. How many know the New Testament church and believers are supposed to be filled up miracles? Divine intervention from heaven into the natural affairs of man. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healings. Gifts of healings. Gifts of healings. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Father, right now I thank you for tonight. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you that Jesus, you are the mighty healer. You sent your word to heal our diseases. Above all, I wish that you would prosper, First John says, and be in good health even as your soul prosper. It means your soul, your mind, your suke, where we get psychology from psychiatry from it's the suke it's the soul the seat of the intellect the will the emotion the mind the memory the brain first john john has said i wish that you would prosper be in shalom the holistic health i wish you wish you would be in yeshua the health that is jesus god who is our savior and healer and deliverer all in one i wish that you would prosper and be in good health therapeuo or therapeuio, where we get the word therapy from. I wish that you would be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Acts 10 and 38, begin to pray. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. God was with him. I want to tell you, this is not by might, not by power, but it's by the Spirit of God. God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing all types of good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. The same Jesus is here today. Acts 19, verse 12. Verse 10. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all that were dwelt in Asia heard of the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greek. This is Paul preaching, and all heard the gospel. And it says, and God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. So that, watch this now, Acts chapter 19, watch this. 
verse 12, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs. So Paul had handkerchiefs on his body that he was so anointed of Jesus. Who is Jesus? The anointed one. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom Jehovah anointed. Put a special enablement on him to do good. And he went about doing good. The same Jesus anointed Paul. So that from his body, Acts 19 and 12. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. And the diseases departed from them. And the evil spirits went out of them. At the very apron or handkerchief of these men and women of God. Because this apostle was so anointed. There was so much power and glory of Jesus in his body flowing out through him. As he preached and taught and healed the sick. That handkerchiefs carried the anointing. The anointing was transferred into handkerchiefs. And it was so anointed that Paul sent them to places where he couldn't go and he put those people put those on others and sicknesses and demons came out by the very handkerchiefs praise God Acts 28 verse 8 Acts 28 verse 8 and it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux. I'm telling you, that sound like Ebola, that sound like COVID. Praise God. To whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. Paul didn't pray for him. Paul went in the house and laid hands and healed him in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Let's pray. This is in you. We're going to pick this up another night. I want to play a special song. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I want to get into this as we close out in prayer tonight in the name of Jesus. This song is by Dawn Me On. And we're going to sing this as we close out tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We worship you. Come and worship. I am the God. I am the God that He led me. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and I your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. This is His word. I am. among you sick. Let him call for the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. If any is sick, come and receive your healing. This is God's word. It's his promise. In Exodus 15, verse Jeremiah 30 and 17, but I will restore to you health and heal your wounds, said the Lord. He sent his word and healed us. Psalm 30 and 2. Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. 1 Peter 2 and 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. God's word. So that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you are healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, let's pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we come in agreement with your word. We come in agreement with your promises. We come in agreement standing on your word tonight that you are Yeshua, the God that heals. You are the healer. You sent your word. By your stripes we are healed. You are anointed. The spirit of the Lord is upon you. You have been anointed to heal. Jesus, we saw that you preach and taught the kingdom. If you don't know the kingdom of the Lord tonight, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to know him or else none of these promises will work for you. 
They only work for covenant people. There is a covenant God has promised that he will be our Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. He will heal our diseases. He will not put any of the diseases of the Egyptians upon us, but he will protect us. You sent your word and you healed my disease. So receive the healing tonight. Health, healing. And if you need a supernatural touch, put your special need tonight. Shalewa and I and the leaders of Kami around the world are praying tonight. Wherever they are, it's midnight, it's late, it's early morning around the world. We are praying. Father, right now we release the anointing for healing. Not according to my will. I have no strength and no power. I worship you, Lord, for you are the living God. You are the true God. And Jesus, you are Lord and Savior. And we worship you. Thank you for this special time tonight. And this special grace. Cover and touch everyone that's listening and watching and receiving tonight. And I release a command for you to go forth and be healed tonight. Go forth and lay hands on the sick if you can. If you can and you're lock in, go ahead and call someone to speak the word of the Lord for them to receive their healing tonight. Go forth, heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. And preach the gospel, the good news of the kingdom. And let you know around the world that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for watching. This is Dr. Kilafu Kali. I'm going to have the finished part four later on, another day. But you can watch more of this on tonight on this Facebook page. Go to our page, Kami Bahamas. Like and su subscribe on YouTube. You can watch more powerful teaching. Go to Power and Glory TV. You should see it right there. Go to our webpage, see more about our ministry. Or go to a Power and Glory TV and watch more of the teaching of the Word of God uh, in your life or whatever station you're watching. Now, God bless you. We love you in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give the Lord praise as we worship Him tonight. Hallelujah. Worship, mm. worship, worship him. 